Thank you very much, Kevin. And uh, Kevin is truly the, uh, the glue that keeps so much of Long Island together. And uh, we appreciate you being here and being part of Long Island. <coughs> You're a good guy. Um, it's my time, it is time now to uh, introduce the county executive. Uh, Steve Ballone took office as county executive in 2012. Prior to that, he served. By the way, did you write this? I didn't. It's all written for me. So. Uh, nothing to chance. Okay. Prior to that, he served as town of Allentown supervisor for 10 years, where his environmental and community revitalization initiatives were nationally recognized for their pioneering and innovative approaches. As Suffolk County Executive, he is focused on addressing the county's fiscal challenges, creating a new performance management team to make government more efficient, and new Department of Economic Development to help grow our economy. Um, I've got to tell you guys that uh, I, uh, I once served on the town board uh, with, uh, with Steve Blown over in the town of Dallas, and uh, you know when we talk about his vision, and we're going to be talking about that today. He really is. He does have a vision for what Long Island could be. And I have watched him grow as a leader. And I, with all uh, humility, say that uh, he is truly going to do great things for Suffolk County. And I couldn't be more pleased to introduce him to here today in front of our staff. Thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank our deputy presiding officer, uh, who is doing a tremendous job. He is the chairman of the Economic Development Committee. And as he said, uh, Wayne and I have worked together a lot of years. And he has been a leader in economic development uh, throughout that time. And I've learned a lot from him. And I look forward to working with him, his committee, and with the legislature as a whole. And we have a, a number of the members of the legislature here. Uh, these have been some very difficult times for the county, as we all know. But we are trying to work together to solve these problems. And I want to thank the members of the legislature for the work that they've been doing. I also want to, I also want to thank the, well, first, I want to thank my two colleagues, our countywide elected colleagues, uh, for the partnership we've enjoyed and the work that we've been doing together. They are doing a tremendous job. Control is with me and treasurer. Thank you for I also have to thank the members of my staff who um, I have to give them the highest praise because they have to work with me. And they have been doing a tremendous job under very difficult circumstances. Thank you. Thank you for the great work you've been doing these past six months. Our speakers. Uh, I think we see here the dynamic leaders that we have in this region. And I thank all of you for taking the time to be here and for all the great work that you're doing. And particularly, Nancy, thank you for coming back from Boston to, uh, to be here today. And all the other invited guests, thank you for being here as well. Uh, important players in our region who are doing great work. I look forward to continuing our partnership together. But most importantly, I want to thank the members of the Department of Economic Development who are here. These, these are not just seat pillars, by the way. These are all the members of the Department of Economic Development uh, who have joined us today, as well as members of the Department of Public Works and the Department of Health. As I said just a few moments ago, this has not been an easy time to be in government. We are facing challenges that we have not seen in decades here. And I want to thank each and every one of you for the dedication and the professionalism that you continue to exhibit. And we're rolling out this plan here in this room in front of you, in front of the Economic Development Department and the other agencies. Because at the end of the day, it will be you who is responsible for helping to make this happen, to implement this vision, to create a, a economy that is sustainable and thriving in our region. Now as you see here, and we all know, there are a number of obstacles that are preventing us from creating sustainable economic growth in our region. Chief among them is the fact that young people have been leaving our region at record rates for more than 20 years, which is remarkable given how much we have here in this region. 
And the reasons they've been leaving are many. The lack of quality affordable rental housing. Quite simply, we haven't built housing for young people to live in. A lack of vibrant places that are attractive to young people. They're moving to all parts of the country, seeking that more dynamic lifestyle that we've failed to deliver here on Long Island and a lack of high-paying jobs. We've just not been cre creating the kind of high-paying jobs that are necessary to keep young people in this region, given our high costs. And then when you combine that with environmental issues and traffic problems, you put together a whole series of things that you can see are posing significant obstacles to sustainable economic growth in our region. However, the good news is that there is good news. There are a lot of positives in our region that are happening as well. And you've heard about them this morning. I would say first and foremost, Governor Cuomo's Regional Economic Development Council. So the first time in our region, all of our stakeholders coming together to plan together and to work together to build a better economic future. And that, of course, is chaired by Kevin Law, Stuart Rubinowitz from Hofstra University, led by Empire State De Development, Andrea Lonex, and they've been doing a tremendous job. And I have to say that the plan that we are talking about today is consistent with the plan that was put forward by the Regional Council this past year. Accelerate Long Island, which you've also heard a lot about. Accelerate Long Island is a groundbreaking initiative. Supervisor Lesko and Burkhaven uh, launching that and now being implemented by Kevin Law and the Long Island Association. But to bring together those research institutions and to marry that with the private sector to commercialize that research is critical for our region. Of course, the major research and educational institutions we have, which I'll talk about uh, in just a few minutes. International companies, you heard uh, Kevin mention these, Canon, CA Technologies, Motorola. We have innovation companies that other companies, smaller companies, would want and will want to be around, will want to collaborate. So we have something to build off of here. We have positive things we can build off of. And the last thing I will say is there are so many exciting things happening at the town and village and local level. Innovative projects that are happening that we can build upon. So the plan that we're talking about today, that I'm talking about today, I will tell you this, simply seeks to build upon all of the great things that are already happening in our region and to piece them together in a way that will produce a coherent economic development vision for our county. That should be the county's role, to be the collaborator and the facilitator and to play its part to help make the things happen, the great things that are already happen, happening in our region to help implement them. Now our plan is called Connect Long Island. Our vision, I would say, is called Connect Long Island. It starts from a very simple premise, that we cannot grow this economy in a sustainable fashion simply by adding more cars to the roadway. I think anyone who has driven on the LIE, this might be some of you in the audience right there, anyone who has driven on the LIE or any of our other major roadways intuitively understands we cannot grow this economy simply by adding more cars to the roadway. So the first step in Connect Long Island is to adjust our land use plan so that we are focusing our most dense development around train stations and mass transits in downtowns. The great news with that is that's happening, as you have heard, uh, in places all around Suffolk County. And I'm going to go to the map to, to talk about a few of those places. You've heard mention Town of Avalon Supervisor Richie. Town of Avalon has a plan that is moving forward to, in, in partnership with the Long Island Railroad, to reopen the Republic Train Station and build a a mixed-use, walkable development 
that is an infill development of an existing suburban shopping center right adjacent to Republic Airport creating a transportation hub there. You heard Wyandex rising. Wyandex is the most economically distressed community on Long Island. But there is a plan in place that, uh, under the leadership of Supervisor Schaefer, is set to actually break ground with a $100 million investment by the private sector to build a new walkable mixed-use downtown, replacing empty parking lots, vacant storefronts, and inappropriate industrial uses. Then you have further east on the Ronkonkoma line, you have the Deer Park train station and the Heartland development, which is not often thought of as a transit-oriented development or talked about as a transit-oriented development. But the reality is that it is very close to the Deer Park train station and it is connected by a shuttle system so that anybody coming to or going off the Deer Park train station is in the heart of the development within just a, a minute or two. So it very much is a transit-oriented development. And then, of course, you have the Marcon Hub, which is a vital project for our region, and groundbreaking in the sense of, of two towns collaborating in this way, of planning together, uh, and moving forward to build a real transportation and development hub for our region with Long Island MacArthur Airport uh, immediately adjacent to the train station. And the county's role, I think this is a, a good example, you've heard this before. What the county should be doing, what we need to be focused on, is working with our partners to do everything we can to help move forward the visions that they are uh, developing on the local level. The county should never be in the position of trying to force things into community. There are too many things happening around our region where there are opportunities with great leaders like Supervisor Lesko who are looking to do things for us to be able to help make those things happen. So these projects are all at various stages, but are moving forward and are exciting projects for our region. But I would say, in addition, there are other projects around the county that are in various levels of, of planning stages or revitalizations that have been moving forward, or places that I would describe where there are just opportunities, potential opportunities, depending upon uh, local preferences. A place where I would say there are opportunities is Yapping. It's a place that has a significant amount of county-owned and publicly-owned land. There is a train station there, and there are plans that uh, are on the table for mixed-use uh, development. <coughs> Moving further east on the Rancocolo branch, the Riverhead downtown, which has uh, enjoyed a resurgence under the leadership of Supervisor Walter. Uh, and I happen to be in that downtown quite a lot because I have a four-year-old daughter and a two-year-old daughter. And we go to the aquarium all the time. And since I have a 12-week-old son now, we'll be going to the Riverhead downtown for many years to come. And the last place I will mention on the Ronkonkoma line is a place that's already been talked about. And it's the end of the line, Greenport. I want to add my words to this. I, I visited Greenport. It was one of the first places I visited as a town supervisor uh, in 2002 when I was elected. And I visited it because of the innovative work that was happening in Greenport and downtown revitalization. And that work was done by Mayor Capel. And by the way, when I came there, he was, a, he was away at Harvard uh, taking a seminar, so I didn't get to see him that day. But it really innovative work. And uh, Mayor Nice, uh, who is the current mayor, they just had the tall ships event in Greenport. 85,000 to 120,000 people came to downtown Greenpoint. That is exactly the kind of thing we need to be doing and exactly the kind of thing that the county needs to be supporting. Now you move to the Port Jefferson branch of the Long Island Road. Huntington Station. The town of Huntington has hired a master developer uh, for uh, that downtown. Kings Park. Kings Park has a great little downtown that is around the train station and immediately adjacent to it are these amazing recreational asset assets. The Sunken Meadow State Park and Nissaquag River State Park. Then you go down to Smith Town, which is a great downtown where a lot of people in the community and elected officials are talking about wanting to do revitalization. We just heard recently about the historic Smith Town Theater 
and is threatened with closure. No one wants to see an asset like that be lost in a downtown. Uh, so it's important that we all come together and work together to, uh, to implement the community vision that. And then of course, further east on the Fort Jefferson branch, Stony Brook University. The Stony Brook University campus is immediately adjacent to the Stony Brook train station. And there is talk of uh, a development, I know, in the time working around the train station uh, as well. And finally, I would uh, also point out Fort Jefferson, mm -hmm. which the train station there is not in the heart of the downtown, but it is a short distance away. And there has been, I know, discussions on a local level about uh, development and what kind of development may occur around the train station. But it is very possible to create a very short link to the downtown. And of course, you have the Cross Sound Ferry there, which is a great regional transportation asset. Now we move down to the Babylon Ranch. Hamlet of Copec has an approved community plan in the town of Babylon for revitalization. Bayshore has been a model of community revitalization. And I know as legislator Andy Carpenter was very involved in some of those steps uh, years back, because these things do take a long time to move forward. And in Patchogue, which we've heard about already, I think there's an example of where you have great vision and leadership at the local level, you can make great things happen. And uh, the Renaissance in Patchogue is still happening uh, thanks to the leadership of Mayor Pontieri and, and the local community there. I would also add on the Battle of Branch, please, a lot of people might not think of, Nancy Shirley. I recently had a meeting with Legislator Kate Brown and Senator Lee Zeldin, where that community, several hamlets, have come together to put to talk about working together to put together a planning document for the future of this community. This is a place where things are happening and, and uh, there are a lot of possibilities, great possibilities for that community. So when you come back and take a look at the map, by the way, this by no means represents all the great town towns that exist in Suffolk County. This is uh, an effort to highlight some of the places where revitalization is happening or opportunities exist. There are many great downtowns throughout uh, Suffolk, but I think when you take a look at the map and you see where things are happening, you start to get a sense that things are moving now. And you see these development hubs starting to take shape. Now, the second step in Connect Long Island is to make supportive infrastructure investments that will strengthen the connections between these development hubs, between these downtowns. And the most important investment that we can make infrastructure-wise is second track. Adding a second track between Farmingdale and the Ronkonkoma hub. And we have gotten great news on second track just recently, thanks to the leadership of Governor Cuomo, Senator Fischillo, the head of the Transportation Committee, uh, Helena Williams, President of the Long Island Railroad, Joe Loda, head of the MTA, and Mitch Pally was here, who's been a long-time advocate as an MTA board member of this second track project. I have maintained for many years that there is no better investment that we can make in infrastructure in our region that has the potential to create economic growth than second track. Adding a second track will create the capacity necessary to make intra-island commuting actually possible and strengthen reverse community. In addition, it is a critical piece in making sure there's things that need to be done in Nassau County as well. But this is a critical piece in making sure that our region is maximizing the potential of the East Side Access Project, something their uh, Regional Planning Association has been very active involved in and I've had uh, many discussions with them about that. The third step in Connect Long Island is to actually start to make north-south mass transit connections. Right now, all of our infrastructure moves in an east-west direction, making it impossible to easily move around Suffolk County or Long Island without getting into a car. But if you adjust land use plan, so that 
your most dense development, and people are now living around these train stations. And then you add the infrastructure investment, and then start to make these connections. All of a sudden, you make it possible for people to move around Suffolk County to do the things they need to do on a daily basis without having to get into a car. <coughs> now, where can we make these north-south connections? Well, the first place and the best place, I would say, is the one tank corridor, right on the border with Nassau County. One tank corridor has 125,000 jobs located on it. If you implement a system of bus rapid transit, which sometimes people refer to as light rail on wheels, all of a sudden, you have people living on the Babylon branch in these development hubs and on Concord branch who are now connected to all of these jobs and they can get there by mass transportation rather than getting into a car. The town of Babylon has completed an analysis of bus rapid transit in partnership with the Long Island Railroad and the town of Huntington. And that study showed that not only is it feasible, but that you can create a system of bus rapid transit that provides dedicated bus lanes without having to take away a lane of traffic or without having to take any property as well. Right now, under the leadership of Supervisor Schaefer, the town of Avalon is moving forward with the second phase of that analysis, which will complete the alternatives analysis required by the FTA to secure federal funding, and the county is, uh, is looking forward to partnering with the town of Avalon on this initiative. You could also make a connection, although not a BRT one, to the Huntington branch, the Huntington station, train station of the Port Jefferson branch, by connecting to the Hart bus system in Huntington at Walt Whitman Mall. Now the second place that we can make a north-south mass transit connection is Saginaw Coast Parkway. Connecting the Deer Park train station and the Heartland development with the Kings Park downtown and those amazing recreational assets at Sunken Meadow and Nissaquah River State Park. In order to do the heartland development, you have to expand the Saginaw Coast Parkway at the end of the day. When that expansion happens, and by the way, under <laughs> current designs, you can make a case for the expansion of, of Saginaw Coast Parkway now. But if and when that expansion occurs, it should include a small bus rapid transit lane, possibly a shared lane, and also a hiking and biking trail that now connects this new downtown with this existing downtown and connects these two branches of the Long Island River. The third place that you could make a bus rapid transit north-south connection would be from Stony Brook University along Nichols Road into the Ronkonkoma Hub. Potentially you also could extend that connection down to connect to Hatchov and the uh, train station there. Now once you've made these transportation connections, again you have given the opportunity now for these people living in these development hubs and working and going to school to be able to move around easily. Now, looking to the east end, we understand that the east end has characteristics that are completely different from the western end of Suffolk County. But one thing that we do share in common between these two parts of the county is traffic. I think anyone who drives on the North Fork or in the Hamptons, particularly during the season, understands that you're not going to grow the economy on the East End simply by adding more cars to the roadway. And the East End is critical to our economy. It has two of the most important sectors of our economy, agriculture and tourism, centered there. Now the good news on the East End is that you have elected officials and community leaders who have been working for a number of years now to develop transportation plans. I met with Supervisor Thurn Holst uh, last year and other leaders on the East End talking about those plans, the system of connecting the train stations with buses that would allow people to move around the East End 
that would give people the opportunity to easily move around on the east end without having to always get into uh, a car. And I'm looking forward to working with the supervisor and Assemblyman Fred Beal, my colleagues on the legislature, Edward Maine and Jay Schneiderman, and Congressman Tim Bishop, who I would say, frankly, we're very fortunate to have. Uh, Congressman Bishop sits on the Transportation Committee and is an expert on these transportation issues. And given the importance of transportation to our economic future, I think it's, uh, it's a great thing for our region that we have Congressman Bishop there. <coughs> There are very positive things from a transportation perspective happening on uh, the East End. Uh, Legislator Schneiderman had introduced Sunday bus service, which I think was uh, very successful. And uh, this summer, I think very soon, we're going to see the, the introduction of a water taxi that connects Greenport with Sag Harbor, which is a great north-south connection for us. So now all of our development hubs are connected to our transportation network. But if we're going to create an innovation economy in Suffolk County and in this region, we have to move beyond that. And we have to make sure that our educational and research institutions are also connected. So we heard about those already what those are. You have Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, which I have to admit is mostly on the Nassau County side, but the farm is in Suffolk County, so we claim that as ours. Uh, we have Soderberg University, of course, and Brookhaven National Laboratory. These three institutions are centers of global innovation, and any county in America would kill to have one of them. The fact that we have these three institutions is amazing. And we have more than that. We have Summit Community College, which is, and I should have mentioned before, is one of our positives. Great innovative work happening at Suffolk Community College. And if we are going to create an innovation economy, Suffolk Community College will play a critical role in that. And Dr. McKay and the leadership there uh, gets that, and they are moving forward with incredible programs at the Community College. We have the Brentwood campus of Southern Community College, which is immediately adjacent to the Heartland Development. We have the Selby campus of Southern Community College, and we have the Riverhead campus of Southern Community College. In addition to that, you are right on the border of Babylon and Huntington and Nassau County, SUNY Farming Down. So it's important that these research and educational institutions are connected to our transportation network. How do we do that? Well, Cold Spring Harbor Lab is a short shuttle link to the Cold Spring Harbor train station and the Port Jefferson line. Stony Brook University, as we already talked about, is right on the Stony Brook train station line. And Brookhaven National Laboratory is potentially an easy shuttle connection to the Yapang train station, depending on what happened there. The Redwood campus of Suffolk Community College is on the Sagan Coast BRT line. The Selden campus is on the Nichols Road BRT line. And the Riverhead campus is a short shuttle connection to the train station and the Riverhead downtown. And finally, SUNY Farmingdale is directly located on the Route 110 bus rapid transit line. So now you have all of our research and educational institutions connected to our development hubs and connected to our transportation infrastructure in a way that allows people to move around. The last step, the last thing that we need to do in terms of creating an innovation economy is to identify and to connect innovation zones. Something I discussed uh, at length last year with Kevin Law and, and Supervisor Lesko. Innovation zones are the places that we are targeting, publicly owned parcels, where startup companies emerging from our research institutions 
can locate and expect to receive some of the best incentives, not only in our region, but in the country, and a streamlined permitting process where they would have the certainty of knowing how quickly they would be able to be up and running. I would say that uh, the Town of Riverhead Supervisor Walter has put forward a plan for a streamlined permitting process at FCAL that I think potentially could be a model uh, for what we need to do uh, here in innovation zones. And we're targeting publicly owned property in the innovation zones because we want to be able to offer these kinds of incentives to these innovation companies that are emerging from our research institutions without taking money away from existing taxing jurisdictions. So where do we locate innovation zones? Well, I think there are, again, potential opportunities. And I would say again, because I think this is important, that the county will never be in a position of trying to force anything into any community. But where a community wants to do something, all of us, all of the members of this department and this government, will be there ready, able, and willing to help make that happen. So where are the potential opportunities for innovation zones? Well, I think first, we have to recognize that Stony Brook University is already a giant innovation zone. There are 40 companies incubating at Stony Brook University right now, and plans for expansion will make that uh, even more. In addition to that, at SUNY Farmingdale, you have the Broad Hollow Bioscience Park. So SUNY Farming is already an incubation site, and there are plans on the way to add another incubation building at SUNY Farming now. And I want to take a moment here to, to recognize and thank Governor Cuomo, and particularly our state delegation. Senator Fischillo and Assemblyman Sweeney, Senators Flanagan and Laval, and Assemblyman Engelbright for their work at Stony Brook University and SUNY Farming now. They have helped lay the foundation for this innovation economy that we're talking about with the work that they've been doing at these institutions. In addition to that, we have the Brentwood campus of Suffolk Community College. There are 160 acres of open space at the Brentwood campus that potentially could be an innovation zone where technology and innovation companies locate. And start to think about the synergies that occur between this college campus and these innovation companies located right next door. Located right next door for this new exciting development, this new downtown. All of which is connected by bus rapid transit and hiking and biking to the Kings Park downtown and these amazing recreational assets. And in addition, potentially, again, given local preferences, the old psychiatric hospital property, the developed portion or portions that are developed currently, could potentially be an innovation zone site where technology companies are located. Now you think about the connections here. People living in the Kings Park downtown using these recreational assets, working in the innovation zone, these technology companies, taking classes at Suffolk Community College, or, or hiking and biking, or taking a BRT line down to concert shows, uh, or working even in the Heartland development. Or potentially hopping on the train and a couple stops away taking classes at Stony Brook University. Or perhaps Stony Brook University scientists and engineers and faculty collaborating with businesses that are located at the innovation zone in Kings Park. When we start to make these connections, you can really start to see the potential that it can have for economic growth and development in our region. We also have opportunities at the Selden campus, where there is a significant amount of open space potentially available as an innovation zone. Brookhaven National Lab has uh, potentially space that could be utilized to locate innovation companies. We could partner with the federal government there. And the Riverhead campus also potentially has buildings where innovation, co innovation companies uh, could locate. And I think there are a couple other places that are uh, very important to be mentioned when we're talking about technology companies and innovation <coughs> companies. You've got FCAL at Calvin Airport. 
and you've got the Hamptons Business and Technology Park at Compressi Airport, which Supervisor Thornholz has been marketing very uh, aggressively and uh, very importantly. These are two terrific sites that potentially, again, could be places that uh, innovation companies are located. The last thing on that, if we go back to the main map, we also have the potential to embed innovation companies in our downtowns on a site-by-site -site basis. That can be accomplished through the IDA, working to mirror some of the uh, incentives that would be offered in innovation zones. And our new executive director, Anthony Meta, is here and we're looking forward to working together with the IDA help move forward some of these economic development plans. That is essentially the Connect Long Island plan. And the point I really want to make here is this is not our plan in the county. This is everyone's plan. Because this is something that just simply seeks to piece together the things that are already happening. Again, the county is never going to be in the position, we as a government, we're never going to be in a position of trying to force things in the community. But what we should always do is focus on being the collaborators. As the biggest municipal government in the region, we're the ones that can help piece these things together. And when we have an opportunity like Ronkonkoma Hub, or when there are things happening in Patchogue, or all the other places we're talking about, we should be so excited in this government that we want to do everything we can to help make them happen. And our goal is to work with the state and the federal government and the Long Island Railroad and the MTA to help put these infrastructure pieces in place to make this kind of sustainable economic growth possible. We can only do this because we are so decentralized as a region. We can only do this, as my colleagues talked about just before, if we do it together. If any part of us town, state, federal government, the private sector, our educational institutions, any part of this that is not in it makes it impossible for us to really create the kind of innovation economy we want. But what is so exciting is that you see so many people, and so many great leaders in this region now, and so many people in the private sector who get this and want to work together to make this happen. You know, we can't, we can't create one Silicon Valley here. You know, we can't create one research triangle park here. We don't have enough contiguous unprotected land in this county to make that happen. But what we can do, if we build upon the infrastructure that we have in place already, is to, in effect, create a series of innovation campuses that are all connected to one another, in which people can easily move around and do all the things they need to do to work, shop, play, go to school, recreate. And that growth can occur without just adding all these cars to the roadway. So that is our, our vision, and I'm here to say that the county, and I believe if we, we do do this together, that Suffolk County can be an economic powerhouse. And I'm here to say, to say to all of our partners who have been doing all the great work that I got to highlight on this map, I'm here to say to all of our partners that this government, it is now this government's mission to make sure that we are doing everything we can to partner with you and to facilitate this vision for growth in our region. We will no longer do planning in this county that is disconnected from towns and villages. We will no longer do planning that is disconnected from economic development. We will now be focused like a laser on implementing the great things that are already happening. There's, there's no time to waste here. As, as Supervisor Lesko likes to say, this is a long-term play. And we have to get to work. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us.